Hi there, and welcome to the third video in my multi-part series about how to dump N64 ROMs from official copies of the game. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the Wii U Virtual Console version, um, and this version is probably the most useful for this purpose since um, you can actually still buy this game on the Wii U eShop. Um, which, if, if you don't already have it, this is a great way to um, buy it, and then you can dump it if you want to, um, for instance, play Randomizer, or uh, use the Practice ROM, or um, look at it inside of an emulator so you can see like memory addresses and stuff for glitch hunting. Um, anyway, um, for this, we're going to need an SD card in our Wii U, and that SD card needs to have a folder called uh, Wii U, all one word, all lowercase, um, in it. And inside that folder, we need the payload.l file, which comes from the homebrew launcher installer. Um, this is very similar to the hack the installer for a Wii. Um, and then we'll need this apps folder. And inside of it, we'll need two things. We'll need the Homebrew Launcher app. Um, this is a little different from a Wii because on a Wii, there isn't actually an app for the Homebrew channel. It's just like it gets installed to your system, basically. But here it actually launches from our SD card just because that's the way Wii U Homebrew works. Um, and then we'll also need a folder for DDD, which I believe stands for Direct Data Dumper. Um, and that's the app we're going to use to actually dump our virtual console title. So anyway, um, let's get started. Um, so to launch the Homebrew Launcher, we need to use a browser exploit. So we're going to go to the internet browser. Um, if you already installed HackSheet on your Wii U or something like that, um, you can just use that method to launch the Homebrew Launcher. But um, in our case, um, I have not done that. So And I don't really want to do that. So I'd rather just use a browser exploit. Um, one sec here. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. So yeah, we're just going to go to um, a website that's hosting a Wii U browser exploit. There's a lot of them available. You can just search for like Wii U browser exploit or something like that. But the one I like to use is Wii U exploit .xyz. And uh, this is the web page that pops up. So we can just click Run Hardware Launcher. And we're just going to wait for it to do this thing. There we go. Awesome. So now we are in the Homebrew Launcher. Um, and it shows all of our available apps. Right now I only have DDD on the SD card, so we're going to launch that. OK. So here's what you get when you launch DDD. Um, the first thing we'll see in one is you need to set up the IP address of the server application. So the way this works is it actually dumps the file over the network to another computer on the same network. Um, so you'll need a computer for this as well as the Wii U. Um, and the computer needs to be on the same local network as the Wii U. Otherwise, this probably isn't going to work. So anyway, I need to know what the IP address of my computer is. And I can do that by opening a command prompt window, um, which you can see in the lower right of the screen here, and typing the following. IP config, um, the vertical bar, which is the pipe symbol, you can get that by holding shift and typing backslash. Um, which is right below backspace. And then type to find, um, and it's going to look for IPv4. Then I can hit enter, and this tells me the IPv4 address of my computer. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and type that <clears throat> into the Wii U here. Um, you control this by using the D-pad. So we want 38, and then this one needs to be 50. There we go. And notice the 192.168 is pre-populated, and that's already correct. Um, and then next, number two, um, either press A to install Dumper and try to launch disk, or press X to install Dumper and return to system menu. Um, so in our case, we're launching a virtual console title, which is launched from the system menu. It's not like on a disk. Um, it was never released as a disk game. So we're going to press X here. And then step three is going to be start the title to be done. 
So I'm going to go ahead and press X. <clears throat> and while that's going on, um, now we need to launch the PC app um, that also needs to be running for the story. <laughs> so um, let me just go to where I have that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Fiddle Dumper. Okay. So this is where I have this. Um, I have a link in the description for where you can download it. You'll need this title dumper.exe file. Um, and then we just need to go to that directory. So I'm going to go there. Um, you can put this wherever you want. This is just the directory. I have it all on my computer. OK, now we're in that directory. So now we need to um, start title dumper. And the way we do that is by typing titledumper.exe. Now the first thing you're going to type is um, which part of the game you want to dump. And in my case, I'm just going to dump the entire game to make it easy. And the way to tell to dump the entire game is to type slash vol for volume. And then the second thing you're going to type is where you want it to be saved on the PC. So um, I am going to be dumping Majora's Mask today. So. I'm just going to make a folder called ML, and I want it to dump to the ML folder. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so um, now that's all set up, so I can hit enter here. And if you get a Windows security alert um, about firewall access, you need to allow this through the firewall, so just check both boxes. Um, and hit allow access. Okay, and I can see title dumper by DMOC waiting for Wii U connection. Um, so the way we get the Wii U to connect is we go ahead and launch the game. Um, so here I want to launch Majora's Mask, so I'm gonna just do that. <clears throat> and it's gonna hover on this virtual console screen for a lot longer than usual um, because as you can see on the command prompt, um, it's dumping everything right now. Um, so yeah, we're just dumping and dumping and dumping, and then once it's all done, um, the actual game will show up on the Wii U. But we just have to wait until it's, until it's all good. So I think right now it's actually dumping the ROM file, I'm guessing, because um, it's such a big file. Uh, the ROM is 32 megabytes, um, so that's 32768 KB. Um, so once it gets to like around 32,000, it's probably going to be done pretty shortly after that. This is all going over the network, so it's a pretty slow connection, so it'll take a little while. There we go. Um, but. It's not too bad for a VC game, which are only like at most like 100 megabytes or so. Um, if you were to use this to dump a Wii U game, which you can do that, um, but it would just take a really, really long time because there are like multiple gigabytes in size. But fortunately for us, we don't have to worry about that. We're just doing a uh, small little game. Just a virtual console title. Um, and here we go. Now we know that um, we're all done with the dump. So um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, close the software here. And if we look in the folder that I dumped it to, you can see we have this bowl folder, which is what we told to dump. Um, and then there's code, content, and save. I believe the ROM file is in content and ROM. <clears throat> and here's the ROM file. Um, it is 32768 kilobytes, so that's the correct size for Majora's Mask. Um, and if you look at... oh, whoops. <laughs> now it's dumping um, the Wii U menu, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, anyway, um, so... Uh, actually, no. It's just finishing the. Uh, it's finishing the dump. There's some stuff that it needs. You need to return to the Wii U menu for it to finish. Um, 
But anyway, so this is the ROM file, and you can see that it's named in a certain peculiar way. Um, there's always this U here. I assume that just stands for Wii U. Um, and then there's the four character um, game ID. This is the same as like for the N64 version. So the N64 version of MM is NZSE. Um, and then the, um, the first letter, I'm not sure, the first letter of those four, I'm not sure what that means. Sometimes it's an N, sometimes it's a C. Um, I'm not sure what the rhythm behind that is. The second two is like the game ID. Um, so in this case, it's ZS. I believe that stands for Zelda Side Story, because the origin of this game is called Zelda Gaiden, um, which means side story in English. And then E means that it's the American version of the game. Um, if there was a J, it would be the Japanese version. If there was a P, it would be the Palette version. And then zero indicates the revision of the game. So there was only ever one version of MM for N64 released in America, which was version 1.0. So the zero means 1.0. If you were on a Japanese console and you did this, um, you would get NZSJ1, um, because it would be the J1.1 version. Um, and the one is like whatever comes after the points in the version number. Um, and I believe that would be the same for PAL, would be NZSP1, because one, usually VC uses the latest available N64. And then this dot 77, I have no idea what that means. Um, if you want this to work in like an emulator or something, you'll just need to rename it um, to something that's like dot n64 or something like that. Um, so here, I can make a copy here and uh, paste. And then... uh, and you can leave that dot 727 if you want. You can name this whatever you want, really. Um, but like, for instance, you can name it, you can just put a dot n64 after the dot 727, and now it sees it as an n64 file. Um, some apps require it to be called dot z64, so we can also do that. Um, and yeah, now it's a dot z64 file. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how you do this. Um, and if you want, we can go through this one more time. Um, with Ocarina of Time. So I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I'm just going to call it OP. <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and dump Ocarina of Time by launching it. Oh, shit. Um, I made a mistake. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is dumping it into MM because I forgot to reconfigure the, uh, the thing. Uh, sorry, we're, we're just going to let that go. <laughs> While well, that's going, um, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. All right, there we go. It's all done now. Um, Close the software here. Now, unfortunately, I skipped a step. <laughs> so this is a great example of what not to do, because I ended up overwriting my um, MM stuff. Um, not everything, though, I don't believe. Uh, yeah, so stuff just got written into the same folder. Um, unfortunately, uh, but it's okay. It's not a huge deal. Um, so here we have the MM ROM, ROM NZSE 0, and here we have the OOT ROM. And again, uh, just going through this, I think the U means VU, the C, I don't know what that means. Let's usually get there a C or an N for N64 game. 
Uh, the ZL is like the game identifier, so in this case it's ZL for Zelda, since this was the first Zelda game released. B means that it's an American version, and the 2 means that it's version 1.2. Um, and 309, I have no clue. Um, and then again, if we wanted to use this in, say, like randomizer or something like that, well, for OOT, this won't work for randomizer, but if we wanted to, like, I don't know, view it in an emulator that requires a certain file extension, we could just rename it to .d64. And then, boom, there we go. Um, now, I'm going to do one more example of what to do if you want to dump a new game, because what I just did is not actually the best way to go about it. Um, so here, let's do Control c um, So if you click in Command Prompt and hold Control and press C, it closes the, um, the the app we were running in Control Panel, the Title, title Jumper app. Um, so we can run it again. And if you type up arrow, if you just hit the up arrow key on your keyboard, um, your previous command will show up. And so all we need to do is change what folder we want to dump. Um, so um, let's dump a different game. Um, I just bought Kirby and the Crystal Shards recently, so we'll do that. Um, so I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call it Kirby. Um, you can call it whatever you want, though. Um, and then we're going to type Kirby, and then hit Enter. And now it's waiting to dump into the Kirby folder, which is what I should have done the first time. Um, and now we're just going to launch the game on the Wii U by pressing A. And here we have it dumping. Same process as usual. Um, and yeah, th this is basically how you do it. Um, I just showed you three examples. Uh, <laughs> the second one where I dumped OOT, there was a mistake. Just to reiterate, um, I needed to control C out of the app in the terminal window first and then launch it again with a new directory. Um, as you can see, it still worked, but the issue is now my OOT folder is empty and my MM folder has like two games inside of it. Like, yeah, so now, now it has like the, the MM game and the OOT game. So if you, if you forget to control C out of the command prompt, um, it's not a huge deal, just know that your games are going to be like mixed up if you do that. Um, but yeah, we'll go in and we'll see our Kirby folder. Okay, so we're done with um, the games done dumping. So if we go to the Kirby folder, ball, contents, ROM, and here we go. Uh, U N K 4 E 0. So N. Uh, Again, that's just a letter. K4 is, I believe, the ID of the game. E means that's the American version, and it's version 1.0. Um, and then, once again, if we want to um, use this in like an emulator or something that's only looking for certain file extensions, I'm um, just going to add a dot .z64 onto the ends, or dot .n64. But yeah. And that's pretty much it. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Um, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to do this yourself. Um, and yeah, uh, have a great rest of your day. <laughs>